from NBC News World Headquarters in New York. The worldwide battle against landmines came to the nation's capital today. As NBC's Nora O'Donnell reports, the activists want U.S. support. In Washington today, a push for the U.S. to sign an international treaty to ban deadly landmines. I want you to look at these young people. These are the young people, the future generations of activists who understand that you work toward peace every single day. All it takes is one false step in a minefield. It happened to me one day, looking down and being disconnected from your body. Life has changed forever. It becomes part of your life. It is behind your house. Every day you go out and you're tiptoeing, not knowing exactly when your leg is going to be exploded. People who are walking to their wells to fetch water. People who are trying to cultivate their farms. People who have mines all around their houses and are afraid to even step outside their front yard. The Ottawa Ban Treaty actually came into force faster than any other arms treaty in history as a result of a coalition of governments and non-governmental organizations that recognized in the field that landmines, in fact, provided an extraordinary humanitarian catastrophe. Ordinary people. I'm going to try to explain how a bunch of ordinary people around the world came together to eventually eliminate landmines and make it a reality. We mounted an advocacy campaign um, we started a letter writing campaign directed at the American government because we wanted them to clean up the mess. We said we didn't have landmines in Kenya, but we wanted to plant landmines in people's minds. And then I uh, make one uh, report, give to the people and Cambodian. If they support, they can sign. And after that, we collect uh, more than a million signatures. Certainly, Princess Diana brought a different element to the campaign, to the movement. She recognized that the media followed her everywhere, that she could take them with her into the minefields. She could give a living face to the victims. We had governments begin to recognize that this was an issue that was growing in concern around the world. And they began to compete for leadership on this issue of global humanitarian concern. That was the first time, to my knowledge, the NGOs were sitting at the negotiating table which was a tremendous factor. We were the experts from the field. We were the experts with the documentation. We knew what we were talking about, and they could not disregard us. So we decided to, to take the risk to uh, issue a challenge, which broke most of the normal conventions, the way you do things. To use that old expression, we rolled the dice on a Friday night. They said, not only are we going to do this, we're going to do it in open, complete partnership with the International Campaign to Ban Landmines, and they're going to be inside the negotiations. We achieved a total ban treaty in one year, five from the launch of the campaign. The coalition of small and medium-sized countries can very actively, together with the civil society, with NGOs, achieve something that most of the usual big players we're not very keen to have. The real prize for this campaign is the treaty, of course, the Ottawa Treaty, um, you know, which was given birth when Foreign Minister Atsworthy made the challenge to the world. The signing of the treaty is just the beginning. There's a lot of work going on about where the international campaign will go from here. Uh, the work won't be finished until all the mines have gone. After this treaty was signed, the hard work came, and uh, we needed to have ensure more countries were joining and that they were respecting their obligations. We have followed the treaty all over the world, encouraging, commenting, criticizing. We set up the Landmine Monitor, the worldwide research network, to check on progress states were making. We've been to many places, Colombia, Kenya, Jordan, Cambodia, the United Nations in Switzerland, in New York, to Mozambique, Nicaragua, Thailand, and in other many other places. Congratulations to all of us, because we are still here and still working to make the mind ban a reality in the poorest countries. I thank the mind ban community for thinking about small people like me who lost our legs. Or arms or eyes. We are here in 
Cartagena, Colombia, and we are all here for the uh, same purpose, for encouraging our governments to honor their commitments to the Mind Ban Treaty, and more especially to make the lives of survivors much better than what it has been before. When the campaign started in 1992, more than 20,000 people were being killed or maimed by landmines worldwide every year. Now it's just over 4,000 people, a huge drop. But it's still every day, someone, somewhere, fall victims to these indiscriminate weapons. Around 20 countries have been declared mine-free, one for every year of the campaign. We will not stop until there is not one more new victim, not one more mine ever laid. Millions have been declared, thousands of kilometers of saved land released to people desperately in need of it. More than 45 million stockpiled landmines have been destroyed thanks to the Mine Ban Treaty. The Mind Ban Treaty is working, but it cannot work on its own. Our members around the world have been campaigning tirelessly, and now, 20 years on, we've got 80% of the world on board, and mines are becoming a relic of the past. Join the world. Join that great voice that shouts, no more landmines. Land your leg. Land your leg. Join us. The ICBL is a fully grown campaign of ordinary people in some hundred countries around the world that do extraordinary work of pushing for a mind-free world, bit by bit, every day. We are closer than ever before, and we won't stop until we reach our goal. Not one more. We are challenging all of you today to stay and finish the job of getting the world rid of landmines once and for all in years, not decades to come.